Welcome back to Broncos and Parts Garage. My name is Chris. If you're new to the channel, stick around to the end. You'll see additional links for content we've already created and uploaded. Today I've got a special guest in the shop. His name is Brad. He's from Riding Shotgun Adventures. They do some really great trail riding videos. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Brad, how you doing everyone? So Chris and I are today are going to take you for a tour underneath the hood and we're going to kind of just ID from a bunch of the major engine components to let you know what they are, where they're located. Um, some you may know, some you may not. Yeah, we're going to start from right behind the grill. We're going to work our way back to the firewall. We're going to try to identify some of the components. We're not going to try, we're actually going to identify some of the components under the hood, kind of give you a lowdown about what they do. Um, in the comment section, feel free to blow us up if we miss something or we tell you the wrong part or the wrong name. Uh, a lot of people call some of these parts different things. This is mainly for experienced guys or new truck owners that are constantly posting pictures on Facebook or Instagram trying to identify a part that's bad or someone has told them, hey, fix this, and they don't know what it is. So in a couple seconds, we're gonna go in here, start looking at some of these components. Let's get started. Yeah. Come on in and let's take a look behind the, uh, the grill here. The first thing you'll see is your AC condenser. On some trucks, you'll see another heat exchanger mounted to the left side, and that will be your transmission cooler. This truck is not equipped with it. Coming up near the top, <clears throat> behind the AC condenser, you'll find your radiator. This is your core support that goes across the whole front of the car. It's what basically holds your fenders together and your radiator core. This right here is not a hood prop. <laughs> this is your jack handle to crank your jack up. As you move further back in the engine, obviously you have your battery right here. We'll move this way. You'll find your airbag sensors. There's two of them. There's one here and one here. Those are basically uh, what sense the impact. They don't have to be hit. There's just a gold ball and a magnet in there. And when, you, when the vehicle comes to a sudden stop, the ball moves, triggers your airbags. You've got your coolant reservoir, your windshield wiper reservoir, Right here, you've got your uh, air cleaner, your mass air sensor. Earlier generations of vehicles, this happens to be a 96, they will not have a mass air sensor. There'll be a speed density vehicle, so this will be omitted and you'll, you'll have a different uh, intake system here. I'm gonna pull this off so we give you a better view underneath the hood. We'll move this and set it aside. Brad, you wanna take over from right here? All right, so as Chris said, we got the air filter box mass airflow sensor on the top lid of the box. Go around the side. We have the ambient air inlet temperature sensor, commonly called the IAT, master cylinder, low fluid sensor. This is the brake pressure transducer, which is used as a second means of canceling the cruise control. This additional wiring that you see and this inline fuse is actually part of a forward recall as these sensors used to had a tendency to leak and they could catch fire so they came out with a recall to put an inline fuse so your vehicle won't catch on fire. So if you have this sensor and you don't have this little jumper wireless with that fuse in there, you are a potential of possibly catching on fire. You need to go to the dealer and get the recall done. Going further, this is the cruise control servo the cable goes up to your throttle body. This right here is your PCM diagnostic test tool connector. And then down below, which you can hardly see, but this connector down here is your actual ignition module. Earlier models, the ignition module was mounted on the distributor. And in the later models, they relocated over here so they would get less heat sink. All right, and then moving over to here, that is your thick film ignition coil. And this is the condenser to prevent radio noise or minimize it. These two solenoids are the Thermactor Air Bypass and Thermactor Air Divert, TAB and TAD. This guy is your EGR control solenoid. This is actually what turns on the vacuum to open and close the EGR valve. <clears throat> right here you've got your windshield wiper motor assembly. 
We've got this vacuum line going from your brake booster to your vacuum tree on your manifold, which helps with a lot of the emissions equipment. Next thing you'll have is your air conditioning compressor. You've got your throttle cable, and as Brad said, you've got your servo cable for your cruise control, all connected to your throttle body, which we'll get to in a minute. Right here, you've got your fuel rail connected to your fuel injectors. This Schrader valve right here, if you can see, that's how you would test your fuel pressure by pressing the tip of that Schrader valve in and fuel should come out. You've got your distributor, your spark plug wires, and your coil wire. I'm gonna let Brad go over the throttle body, but you've got your upper radiator hose, you've got your alternator, you've got your belt tensioner, and I'm gonna let Brad go over the throttle body system. Go ahead, Brad. All right, I'm gonna jump back real quick to this sensor on the AC compressor. That is your high pressure transducer that would cause the, if the pressure in the AC system gets too high, it'll turn off the compressor so you don't damage any components. So going now to the throttle body, this guy right here is the throttle body. Throttle cable opens and closes the blades. This valve is called a throttle air bypass valve, also commonly known as a, a idle air control, IAC. Right down here in the intake is your coolant temperature sensor for the gauge. This guy right here is your ECT, coolant temperature gauge or coolant temp sensor for your PCM. This solenoid is your canister purge solenoid, which opens and closes and allows the gas fumes in the canister, which is located right here, to enter the intake and be reburned. This guy right here is your EGR valve, and the center on top is the EGR position sensor. This literally is a pintle that goes up and down as the valve opens and closes. Your throttle position sensor is located on the bottom side of the throttle body. It is difficult. Uh, if it goes bad, you need to remove the throttle body to get to it. It's basically the opposite side of yes. this. Uh throttle or butterfly assembly right here. Yep, the throttle shaft goes straight through and this reads the um, the shaft position as you open and close the throttle. Let me jump in real quick. Uh, these are your two <clears throat> heater hoses. They go to your heater core. And again, I've made a video on how to replace your heater core. Uh, give you a good reference. This is where you go into. And you can see this is covered from the factory with some sort of rubber or butyl mix on here. You've got your AC accumulator right here. Next to it is your low pressure. Uh, valve, I guess would be the best word for it. That's where you'd add your um, refrigerant. Refri <laughs> thank you. That's where you add your refrigerant if your system's low. Um, your, go ahead. This guy is your AC cycling switch. That's what controls the compressor to turn off when the pressure gets too low. Show them where the uh, the, the resistor is. Okay, the resistor. You get the camera down there. There you go. Yeah, the blower motor resistor is this one right here. That's Obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but that is what controls the speeds depending on the the selection you make on your HVAC controls inside the vehicle. A lot of people have uh, actually purchased these off me. They're very important, this is your ground strap. A lot of these are missing on these older trucks. They've rotted out or turned green. Make sure you have your ground strap hooked up, guys. Just a little tidbit. Right here, we've got your blower motor for your HVAC system. Up here, we've got the actuator that moves the recirculation door when you go from normal to to max AC. All right. On, on that topic, this white vacuum line right here, which is broken, is a very common issue on the OBSs. When that line breaks, your HVAC, your, your climate control will default to defrost and you'll be like, how come I'm not getting any air out my vents? This vacuum line supplies vacuum to the inside of the truck for the control panel to allow the actuators to go to the correct position. So I don't know where the other end is right offhand, but that's something we're going to have to fix on this vehicle. Absolutely. Uh, something a little bit more basic and self-explanatory, but we've got your jack. And again, I've made a video on how to refinish your jack. We've got the jack and the lug wrench further down there. You've got your starter solenoid. You've got your battery, pretty simple. Brad, you want to identify this? this Basically, this, it's a muffler. Yeah, this is, either, I can't remember if it's the air inlet for the air pump used for emissions, 
Um, but basically, the, the tab and tad solenoid identified over on the other side controls where the air pump is going to pump the air, whether it's going into the back of the uh, cylinder heads, where there is a tube that connects the heads together, or the tube that goes all the way down to the in between the two catalytic converters on right after the Y pipe. So depending on warm up, it will pump air down to the converter to help warm the converter up and, and make it start it so it starts functioning because it needs to be like 700 degrees, don't quote me on that, before it actually starts doing the converting process. <laughs> These components are the ones that most people want to remove when they want to remove all their emissions equipment. Um, you can find write-ups online. Uh, down here is the smog pump. You can see that down there. A lot of people like to remove that. Um, it really doesn't kill your horsepower that much. Uh, you can throw codes. Um, there is a way to bypass all of that. They make a bypass pulley and they make, you know, you'd have to resize your belt. Uh, but it's, it's a common practice. I've, I've never done it. Um, nor would I do it. Just like EGR valve elimination, a properly operating EGR valve will only operate during part throttle cruising, which at that point really doesn't hurt your performance. While you're at wide open throttle, EGR valve does not function. It is not going to hurt your performance. Therefore, there's really no need to eliminate it if it's working properly. And if it's not working properly, it really should be diagnosed and repaired because an EGR valve isn't going to give you any major improvements by eliminating it. All right, so one thing we didn't cover was on the passenger side valve cover in the very back underneath the upper intake plenum is where the PCV valve, the positive crankcase ventilation valve, is located. Kind of a pain to get to to service, but it is important. And then backing up to this canister right here, this is a, a vacuum storage canister, which stores vacuum so that let's say you are in max AC and you're driving on the highway and you accelerate past somebody, um, it stores enough vacuum so that your vents will not change mode um, because without a vacuum canister, as soon as the engine vacuum goes down to zero, your climate control would change. So we have to store vacuum so that doesn't happen. That's really the main purpose for this guy. And, and it's good to the last drop. Yes. <laughs> it looks like a can. <laughs> the newer ones, actually they improved it. It's a, a kind of an oval shaped plastic reservoir instead of the, uh, the old coffee can style metal ones that kind of rot and rust and don't look good. Again, back in the area where the PCV valve is located, a lot of people are like, where, where do I check my transmission fluid? Some of them, it's way down low here. On some of the early builds, it actually does extend up higher, but that is where you check and fill your transmission fluid. And then of course, seeing your spark plug boots, that's where your spark plugs are. And this is one of the air tubes that come off the air pump that connect to the tube that goes from head to head, cylinder head to cylinder head. All right, come on over here and we'll take a look over here. Right here, underneath this air tube, you'll find a hydraulic control unit for your anti-lock brake system, commonly referred to as an HCU. We do sell these used. In front of it, it's this one's gonna be a hard one to see. Behind the, actually come on over here and look down straight here. Behind your driver's side headlight, right there at the end of that screwdriver is another ABS module. That's for your rear wheel ABS or four wheel? That's for four wheel. Yeah, excuse me, four wheel ABS. Again, I'm going to get a lot of guff on this yeah, explanation. This, this is the this is the control module for the hydraulic control unit. Correct. So that's the brains that controls your four wheel ABS. All right. Another easy one over here. You'll find your check oil. That's your dipstick. This is where you, this is where you fill your oil. Uh, pretty pretty basic stuff, uh, but not basic for everybody. Uh, Brad, you want to come over here and? All right. So over here, back to this corner. This is your power distribution box. This is where all your uh, under hood fuses and relays are located. You also have an interior fuse panel that's right there by your parking brake. And fuses, relays, and this black plug right here, which does not have the spout connector in it. This is the connector that you need to remove when you time the ignition, the uh, 
ignition timing. Yep. This is what the spout connector looks like. So you'd basically pull this out, time your vehicle, and then reinsert this and it'll save your timing. If you don't pull that out, it'll just default back to the uh, earlier timing or factory timing. Yeah, correct? if you don't pull that out, you're not gonna get an accurate setting for your timing. And then this connector right here is your PCM connector, which you would unbolt that, and then you remove the PCM from the inside of the vehicle. And I think we've covered everything over here. Actually, this red connector is your ABS diagnostic connector. Okay, so on vehicles that do not have a mass airflow, you will, which would then be called speed density, you will typically find a manifold air pressure sensor located in about this area with a vacuum line connected to it from your vacuum tree. So if you don't have mass airflow, you'll have a MAP sensor. That's how the PCM determines the load on the engine to control fuel. We forgot a couple major components. Um, down uh, on the side of the engine block, you'll find your wobulator shaft. Um, over here, underneath your steering shaft, you'll find your blinker fluid reservoir. Uh, and um, he forgot to mention behind the solenoid pack, you'll find your canooter valve. Um, and just behind the block, you'll find the flux capacitor.